In this video, we will continue our look at physical quantities. And in particular, we'll be focusing a little bit more on derived quantities, but in particular, derived quantities whose units are special names of, well, famous people who did work in those areas. And we'll show how we can actually break down those units in terms of their base unit equivalents, right? So we're looking at physical quantities whose units are given special names, names of people. And of course, we'll be basically be able to break down those units into their base unit equivalents. So we can look at um, the derived quantities. In one column, over here, we'll be looking at their, their, their derived units. Right, we'll be looking at the name of the unit, symbol, the symbol it carries, and of course the equivalent base units. Right, so this is basically what our focus will be on. Now, the first one that comes to mind is force. So the derived quantity is the force. And what is the SI unit of the force? The SI unit of force is a Newton. Now, if you notice, basically, Newton, which is the name of a famous person, despite being a proper noun, we begin with a common letter or lowercase letter. However, its symbol is an uppercase letter, in this case, an uppercase n so the word newton if written as a unit is written with a lowercase n but its symbol n is written as an uppercase n now how do you arrive at the base unit equivalent of the newton now if you go back at the equation to calculate force force is equal to mass times acceleration mass is a base quantity and its unit is the kilogram the unit of acceleration, of course, is the meter per second squared. So therefore, the unit of force is obtained by multiplying the kilogram by the meter per second squared. And so therefore, the newton is equivalent to the kilogram meter per second squared. So basically, wherever you see the unit newton, it can replace with kilogram meter per second squared and vice versa. Because a newton is equivalent to this, and the kilogram meter per second squared is equivalent to the newton. All right? The next quantity we look at, or the next one in our list, is pressure. No, let's not look at pressure yet. Let's look at um, work or energy. So we're gonna let's look at energy. Energy, of course, has the same unit of work, which is the joule. So the SI unit of energy is a joule. The symbol for the joule is an uppercase G. Now we can also express energy and its, more, and its unit rather in terms of their base unit equivalence. And if we come over here, how do we calculate energy? Well, let's think about work because work and energy, of course, are directly related. If you remember that work done, W, is equal to the force times the distance moved in the direction of the force. So by expressing work done in terms of the product of force and distance, we can actually break each of these into their respective base units and get the corresponding base unit um, of the joule. So the SI unit of force, as is seen from the previous example, is the kilogram meter per second squared. Because of course, that is what the Newton is equivalent to. And since you're multiplying this by the unit of distance, which is the meter, then when you multiply these together, then they become kilogram meter squared per second squared. And so the base unit equivalent of the joule is the kilogram meter squared per second squared. Good? The next in our list is pressure. 
and the SI unit of pressure is the Pascal symbol for which is PA and uppercase P now how do we equate the Pascal in terms of its base units we of course have to go back to the defining equation for pressure how is pressure calculated pressure is equal to force divided by area now since we already have the SI unit of force in the table in terms of the official name the Newton and of course in also in terms of the base unit equivalence so the unit of pressure would be equal to the Newton divided by the meter squared but since we're expressing each unit in terms of its base unit equivalence we must therefore express the Newton in terms of its base unit equivalence and so this of course is equivalent to the kilogram meter per second squared divided by meter squared and basically this goes takes us back to our laws of indices according to the laws of indices whenever you are multiplying indices of the same base you keep the base and you add the powers however when it comes to division of indices with the same base we keep the base and we subtract the powers so in this case you see that there's m in the numerator and there's m squared in the denominator so we keep our m and we subtract 2 from 1 and so this gives us kg m to the 1 minus 2 s minus 2 which of course is equivalent to kilogram per meter per second squared and so the pascal is equivalent to the kilogram per meter per second squared the another of our special units or special quantities we can look at is power the SI unit for power is the watts symbol W an uppercase W now let's examine the watt in terms of its base unit equivalent if you remember how we calculate power power is equal to work done or energy converted of course divided by time taken and of course work and energy have the same SI units so this would be equal to joule divided by second so the SI unit of power is a joule per second which is of course equivalent to the watt but we're breaking down each unit in terms of its base unit equivalent and of course a joule is equivalent to the kilogram meter squared per second squared and so therefore this would be equivalent to kilogram meter squared per second squared being divided by the second again this takes us back to laws of indices where if we're dividing indices of the same base we keep the base and we subtract the powers so this becomes kilogram meter squared s to the minus 2 minus 1 which gives us kilogram meter squared per second cubed and so therefore the base unit equivalent of the power of power is the kilogram meter squared per second cube we could do a few more let's think about um hmm, charge charge now the SI unit of well electric charge right electric charge but for simplicity I'll just write charge um no to be complete I'll write electric charge, right? Electric charge. So, electric charge. Now, the SI unit of electric charge is the Coulomb. So, the Coulomb, spelled C-O-U-L-O-M-B. Now, the symbol for Coulomb is an uppercase C. Now, what are the equivalent base units of the Coulomb in terms of well what are the equivalent base units of the coulomb now to arrive at that 
we have to think of the defining equation for which a coulomb is related um, well for which the electric charge is related and if you recall electric charge Q is equal to current times time so electric charge Q is equal to IT and to get the base unit equivalent of the coulomb we simply combine the base units of the current and that of the time and so this will give us the unit would be ampere second so the base unit equivalent of the coulomb is the ampere second and lastly we'll examine one more this case we're going to be looking at frequency so frequency the symbol or the unit for frequency rather is the hertz spelt h e r t z and the symbol for hertz is uppercase h z now what are the base unit equivalent of hertz to do that we go back to the equation which allows us to calculate frequency and that equation is that frequency f is equal to 1 over the period t period of course represents time the SI unit for which is the second and so therefore the SI unit of frequency would be equal to the reciprocal of the second same thing as s to the minus one so therefore the Hertz is equivalent to s to the minus one right so basically this shows a list of a few of the derived quantities with special names where the names can be expressed in terms of their equivalent base units now when exactly will we need to be able to use these we need to be able to use these in the next topic we're going to be moving on to which is um dimensional analysis or what is basically referred to as homogeneity of physical equations right so later on we're going to be able to check if an equation is homogeneous and in order to do that we should be able to express each um, term in the equation in terms of its equivalent base units.